let's talk about the Maker Gear. Bought the Maker Gear just uh, about a week or 10 days before Black Friday last year. And uh, got it, put the order in, had a confirmation that day. My box shipped the following day. It was down here in a couple days via UPS. The packing on it was incredible. I think I put some early pictures up of what it looked like when it was packed on my first videos on there. It's sturdy. You know, so I just wanted to bring the printer. I don't print with it at normally this position on the table. It's a little bit farther over on my desk, but I wanted you to be able to see the printer. I've done six or seven videos now made on my Maker Gear. You know, this is the printer that I'm using. It's got a eight by 10 print bed area right here. You'll see I've got a glass plate on it right now. And that glass plate I treat with hairspray. Um, the height, I think it's about eight inches on there. It may be a little taller. I'd have to check in that. If that's not right, I'll put a note in the, uh, in the video. But this is the configuration that I purchased. So when I bought the um, printer, I added this piece right here on the side. So it has an SD card and it also has an LCD screen on here. So this gives me an ability to control my printer without having to use just raw G code. So it'll menu will come up on this and I can set the print temps. I can print from the SD card and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a good add on. Um, if you're not looking at doing some other type of interface device, you know, I did start printing with it connected directly to my computer. And I know you're not supposed to do that, but it just worked. I like the control that Simplify 3D gives me when it is directly connected to the printer. You know, just be able to monitor stuff that's going on. It's nice to see the temp graphs and you, know, you see the G code going along and you get kind of an estimate of where you're at and a visual re representation on there. Never had an issue at all until I upgraded to Windows 10. And apparently Windows 10 does a little something with the USB ports and it would pause the print. So that happened to me twice. I had two failed prints because it just paused during Windows 10. Since then, I went to printing on an SD card and I've never had a problem since. And really, I should have done that a long time ago because the printer I do have hooked up on a battery backup. So if I do lose power, the printer will keep right on printing. It's getting its G code from right over here. So, you know, I don't have to worry about if my something happens in my computer, something locks up on the computer, somebody in the house inadvertently closes the Simplify 3D window out. But, you know, so this I think is a, a well worth add on. It is a green screen. It's not like a full color, you know, LCD screen. Not the biggest fan of the of the knob control. Sometimes you have to turn things twice is not as precise as you would think on the knob, but it's not a big deal. You just rotate it one more time and it will move on the screen. But this I think is a pretty good add on. It was $99 to add this on when I bought it to the printer. And I'm glad, really glad I did. Uh, other things on the printer, the printer stock at that point, there's not a bunch of options that you can add to this printer. You can add a dual extruder, but you know, anybody starting out in printing, I don't think you really want to jump onto that right off the bat. Um, and you know, I just haven't seen too many maker gears with a dual extruder set up on it. In the forums, if you go to the modification section and then those guys are doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but I'm just talking for the person that's buying their printer, maybe it's their first printer, maybe it's their second printer that they're upgrading from. This is what your printer is going to look like if you choose the LCD option upgrade um, when you get it to the house. So the, you know, the filament sits right over here on the side. I've got, a lo I've got it loaded up with a eSun uh, PLA Plus, uh, gray filament or silver filament, it's not gray, it's silver, and uh, feeds up this tube, feeds right here into the extruder, all metal hot end at the bottom. And that thing gets hot. I mean, it, it'll print all the material. I don't have to worry about, can I only do PLA and ABS? It'll do all the exotics, bronze fill, chrome fill, carbon fiber, things like that. Uh, you got this small fan on the front. That's your cooling fan. You know, it's it just works. You know, it works on PLA. You guys know I only print in PLA right now. I haven't really tried any of the other stuff, the ABS. I'm always in my office when this is printing anyways. Um, so I don't want to have to vent the fumes out the windows. It's like 110 degrees down here in Florida. So if I don't have to crack a window to vent fumes, I'm not going to. Uh, the PLA has been working out great for me. Sometime I want to try the PETG and uh, see how that works. But you know, I'm in no rush to jump on that as long as the stuff I'm doing now is working. 
the print bed, you know, it, it comes with a glass plate. I would recommend getting a second one, uh, especially for printing PLA. When I started with it, you're going to get a roll of Kapton tape. I'm not sure if that's still in this drawer or not. Yeah, you're going to get this right here. This came with the printer when I bought mine. Yeah, chuck it. Um, this is an exercise of frustration about putting this on the glass plate so it's smooth and there's no gaps and there's no air bubbles on there. You know, so I got this. I did my first few plates with it on there. It worked okay. Um, I had a little bit of curling on the edge of my prints and stuff like that with this Kapton tape. So I was like, oh, let me buy some sheets. So I got some full sheets that would cover the glass. I put that on. It was a pain in the butt to put on because there was always an air bubble somewhere. I even did the wet application method. And I'm like, man, this is a pain. Um, and so then I went to... I think it's pet sheets it's a light green sheet it's in one of the early videos because i showed what the sheets looked like i put that on there that stuff ended up being worse than the Kapton tape for adhesion so i went and got the uh build tack and i put some build tack on my plates and that stuff adheres it adheres so well that you basically have to knock your pieces off because it sticks so well to those sheets and therein was the problem. My prints stuck so good, I ended up breaking some of my prints trying to get them off. And then I ended up tearing. I had a little barrel that I printed with a small surface area, and it adhered so well when I pulled it off, it tore the build tag. That stuff's $12 a sheet. You know, you, you want that the, the last on there. So, you know, so I put another sheet on. I printed with it, and it just... I. For me, I was like, there's, there's got to be something else on there. And I caught somebody else's video a long time ago. And I see that people print with hairspray on the glass. Now, this is for PLA. For PETG, I don't know what they're using. But I know for ABS, you're just going to make an ABS slurry. It's almost the same principle on there. You're going to melt some ABS and some acetone and rub it on your glass. And you're not going to have any issues at all. But for this got myself a can of Aquanet from the dollar store and it's the purple can, the extra hold. I washed the glass to get any additional, you know, residue that might have been on there from earlier hairspray off. I spray it, I let it sit for an hour, I put it on here and I've been using that method now probably five months. I have yet to lose a print due to adhesion and I've had yet to have a print curl at all on the print bed with hairspray. And depending what I'm printing, I can get four to five prints off each glass plate. Um, so for me, it's the hairspray all the way. Uh, some people use zebra plates. Some people use build tack. Some people use, there's other type of plates that you can mount onto here. The glass came with it. Hairspray is two bucks a can. It lasts me like two and a half months per can and it hasn't failed me yet. And it's the easiest application ever because when I go to clean the plate, I just run hot water and wipe it with a paper towel. All that old hairspray comes right off. I put the new stuff on and I'm ready to go. Um, see what else, filament. I mostly use eSun's PLA Plus. Um, InservO is the website, uh, inservo.com. He also is on the Maker Gear forums. I believe he owns four plus of these. So he's doing this professionally. Yeah, so I'm not sure what all he prints and stuff like that, but he's got a, a need for multiple printers and he is the US distributor for eSun filament. So most of the time on Amazon, if you're buying a roll of eSun filament and it says int servo, that's him. That's coming from his company, or you can go to his website and buy it there. Um, the stuff works. I love the brown. I love the silver. The green looks fantastic too. You know, I print uh, with some uh, hatchbox also. I haven't had a problem any of the hatchbox stuff, and I did get some free rolls of Matter Hackers PLA Plus filament too. And I like the color and I like the print. It's just twice as expensive as the E Sun and the hatchbox. So for me, especially now that I'm printing a lot of stuff for a lot of people 
it, the cost matters because I have to pass that cost on to who I'm printing. If I'm buying a 45 or $50 roll of filament, you know, if they want to hand me the roll of filament and say print with this and they want to buy the $50 roll, that's fine. But for me, if you come in and we're quoting out a small job to print something, you know, this eSun PLA Plus is fantastic. You know, it, it just it just works. And to the filament manufacturers, if anyone happens to watch this, this is one of the biggest single reasons why I love the eSun filament. This is a box, this is a roll of hatch box. It's great filament, it's silver filament, it's PLA. You know, here it is right there. How much do I have on here? When this is sitting on the printer and you're looking at it, how much is there? Do I have enough to get the next print job through? This is a roll of eSun PLA Plus Green. You can see exactly how much filament you have on this roll. You don't know until you've used a couple rolls oops, with this type of filament how big a deal it is for you to be able to glance at that spool and see, oh yeah, I've got enough. Because as you're printing, after nine months, and I'm printing dice tray after paint tray after, I know how much the roll is going to disappear between print jobs. I can glance over and say, oh yeah, I can finish another dice tray easy, maybe two out of what's left here. I can't tell you that. You know, I had to pull this roll off because I don't know how much is on here. So what I do with these short rolls, they go over to the Wanhow, and I just do test prints with them until they're empty, you know, on stuff that uh, I'm printing. But, you know, manufacturer, I don't, I don't know how much this costs to make it clear, but you really should. You know, this, this makes all the difference in the world to me. All right, enough about the filament. Um, you know, some of the things I, you know, this got linear rails on it rail system so you see a couple of the other print manufacturers starting to switch over to this it where it's quiet you know and i keep saying it works because it just does you know in nine months i print 40 to 60 hours a week on my printer every week and with the exception of two things i've, I've replaced two things on this printer i replaced this fan right here because when i unloaded my filament I pulled it out and I let it go and it hit the fan right here and broke a blade. That's 100% my fault. So I ordered another fan and I have um, replaced a nozzle. So the nozzles are $10 a piece. The fans, I'm not sure, I'd have to look on the website. They are less than $10 a piece. So I would highly recommend if you're buying the printer, buy yourself an extra fan just in case, because you're gonna get excited and you're gonna pull this out and this is still gonna be spinning from a print job you just finished and let it go and you'll be shocked that this thing will perfectly bounce right into your fan blades. Um, since then, I've added a piece of G-code in my ending script in Simplify 3D. So when my print job stops, this fan immediately stops, this cooling fan. This little fan right here um, comes on at 50 degrees Celsius and turns off at 50 degrees Celsius on the print head. So and I've never had a problem with this one at all. It just keeps spinning and working. And this does rock up out of the way, you know, like that. So you can lift it up if you need to get in there. And like I said, with the print head, um, I probably had 400 hours, 300 hours on my last little print head. And I finally had a clog in there because you, you can kind of see it's getting gummied up and stuff like that. So again, if you're buying the M2, for ten dollars, get yourself an extra nozzle, and you'll, your downtime will be probably ten minutes while you change that nozzle out. And if you see the other one next to it, I figure, well, I'm going to order one. I'm going to order a stainless steel one also because I have a roll of carbon fiber. So that's uh, what I'm going to do with that. So that's why well, I have the stainless steel nozzles for that carbon fiber filament on there. But you know, an extra fan, an extra print nozzle. I would recommend and I would recommend a second build plate you know get a second piece of glass less than $30 I believe I think you know when I paid for mine I have three pieces of this borosilicate glass it comes right from maker gear so I know it's the right stuff it's the same stuff that came on my printer and probably the biggest single tip that I can give you for using this printer is never pull a print off the build plate while the plate is still on the printer 
I've kind of taken that to heart. I have not had to level my print bed in five months. I haven't had to touch it because every time the print ends, I unclip the clips and I take the piece of glass off and I put the next piece of glass on. And then I let this other piece cool. A lot of times I print overnight, so I get up in the morning and my print job's done. I just unclip the two bulldog clips. I take the piece of glass off. I put the new piece on. And the print just pops right off the glass at that point because it's cooled and it releases the PLA. Um, but if you're sitting here on a weekend and you have a print job finished, even a small print job, even you know those little barrels that I printed and stuff like that, the tendency is going to come over here and grab that and pull and you're going to get a bunch of resistance you know if this is still hot and when you pull it can tilt your build you know your build platform on here that can cause it to go out of level take your build plate off the build platform when you take your piece off biggest piece of advice i can give you once you're set once your z height is set and your bed is level if you do that it's going to be months in between you know, I'm five months in and I haven't leveled it, you know, so I'm going to keep going like I'm going and I'm printing edge to edge on this printer now. Um, I used to just do, well, I load this thing up, you know, because I've been using it so long. So I'm printing paint trays that are coming to within a quarter inch of the whole print bed. So I'm using all the space on there. And once your bed is leveled, if you keep that in mind and take this plate off, it's good to go. Um, or you won't be sitting there having to level the bed. That's the bed thing here is strong anyways. You, you're not, you're gonna have to really pull on it to get it out of level. The WAN how, if I breathe on it funny, the build plate moves. It's, they've got, they've updated the system on that one. But when I start really printing with that one, I'll get into that. Um, so uh, if you buy a printer today, you're gonna get a metal motor mount up here. And your Z-stop is actually gonna be at the bottom now and it's gonna have a four point leveling system versus a three. I think it's a Rev E maker, the M2, maybe a Rev F, I'm not sure. But it still looks just the same. If you're looking at it from the front, what you're gonna see is this. Yeah, it's got this metal motor mount right here. So it would, it, it'll replace this, but I don't need to replace it right now. Everything is still working fine. so. If something happens that I have to take this apart, I'll upgrade it with the, uh, the metal motor, the metal mount. The, the Z-stop being at the bottom is nice because trying to set your gap up here is tough on the older ones on there. It's not super friendly trying to tighten this screw down that's over here to set your Z-height. But once it's set, you're good to go if you take your build plate off, you know, and you know, take your prints off when they're not on the printer. Uh, anything else? You, know, you guys already know I like the printer. I can say this for a fact. And I was talking to somebody last night. We got, a, I was down playing a Star Wars Armada and a couple of the people were there. And they saw the printer, not the printer, but some of the pieces that I had from the printer. And, you know, I said, if I had the money again, if I'm sitting here today with two thousand dollars, around two thousand dollars, if I'm sitting here today, I am buying this printer again, hands down, without a question. I will buy this printer, I will buy this display add-on, and I already own a copy of Simplify 3D. Those three things. If you're buying this printer, do yourself a favor and buy yourself Simplify 3D. You spend eighteen hundred and fifty dollars on the printer. Spend another hundred forty bucks and buy Simplify 3D. You can even get the license when you buy the printer. Add it to your cart and put it in. It being able to add and remove support structure just that program is just light years beyond some of the other stuff that I've thrown up. You know, when just previewing some models before. You know, it works. Don't spend this amount of money on the printer and not just spend a few. Yeah. I know it's another $150, but nine months later, what do you want to be doing? Do you want to be printing or do you want to be fiddling with your printer or fiddling with software? I want to print. That's what I do. Um, so if you made it this far in, I appreciate how far in. I'm 22 minutes in. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this video here, you know, on my review. This, it's a fantastic printer. They've knocked it out of the park with this printer. When you pick it up, I mean, it's small. I mean, people have come to my office and said, wow, it's little on there. When you pick this up out of the box, you're going to be, wow. This is thick metal. You cannot do, you can't flex this. You can't bend this. You know, it's it's thicker, yeah, I'm going to say than Wayne Howe, but it's way thicker than Wayne Howe. But this is a different league of printer. Um, it just works on um, there. So if you're in the market and your budget, and if you're budgeting around $2,000 for a 3D printer, my recommendation is going to be this. There's like three in this price range that are really good printers. But for nine months, I've just printed 40 to 60 hours a week since I've had the printer without fail. One clog, two clogs in nine months. Not a single hardware failure. It comes with a six month warranty, you know, parts warranty. Didn't have to use it. It's not loud. Let me turn it on. That's what it sounds like when it's just sitting here idle. You know, I do keep it turned off if I'm not going to print, but I'm going to get ready to move this back over and fill this build plate up with some more printablescenery.com stuff. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause the video here for a second. And then uh, I'm not going to change my setup, but I'm going to go into uh, just some channel updates. So I've got $2,000 budget that you're looking for a 3D printer. You will not go wrong with this printer, hands down. Yeah, you can see some of the stuff in front of me. I'll talk about this stuff in just a minute because it'll be a quick 10-minute video on a, a channel update. So appreciate you being here. If you're new and this is the first video you've seen on the Maker Gear M2, check out my Made on Maker Gear videos. I think there's five or six of them up there. They're 30 to 40 minutes long, and they are chock full of stuff that I've printed on this printer. So you have a good night, and I uh, appreciate you being here on my channel, and I'll see you again soon.